Well, welcome everybody to uh, CCBC's um, uh, seminar on Shanghai's financial services industry. I'm Sarah Kudalakos. I'm the executive director of the Canada China Business Council, and we're very fortunate to have a, a group of experts here from Shanghai's financial services sector. Uh, as I think everybody knows, financial services is one of the areas in which China has been not only innovating, but opening up to foreign investment. And we've seen a lot of uh, examples recently, particularly after the phase one U.S.-China trade deal of uh, American companies like BlackRock and Citibank and others uh, getting licenses to do things in the financial services industry in China that they weren't previously able to do. And here at CCBC, we are always adamant that we want to be able to invest and do business in China uh, like a local company. And many of these liberalizations allow wholly owned companies or uh, you know, having the company structure that you want. So as we think about how we can make that happen, uh, we often think about where to make that happen. And so today we're going to talk about what's happening in Shanghai because the actual execution of many of these policies is often done differently in different cities. And so I'm pleased to have uh, five different speakers with us today. Uh, and you can see they're from uh, many different organizations. I'll introduce them as they come up to speak, but each one of them is going to give a presentation and then hopefully we'll have time for a few questions at the end. Uh, so uh, welcome to, uh, to all of our members and guests today. The, uh, before I start, actually, I'd like to introduce Edward Dai, who is the uh, director of our Shanghai chapter. And uh, Edward is a, a, a hugely valuable resource for our members in Shanghai. And for any of you that want to follow up after this, Edward is the person to help you with that. So thanks, Edward, for setting this up today. So the first speaker we have is Mr. Xue Feng. He's the president of Invest Shanghai, also known as the uh, Shanghai Foreign Investment Development Board, a very important organization in Shanghai. Uh, and uh, Mr. Xue has been in, uh, has worked in many different areas in the Chinese government, including World Trade Organization Affairs, the Ministry of Commerce, uh, SCOFCOM, which we work very closely with. And so we're really excited to have him here to kick things off. Uh, welcome, Mr. Xia. Okay, thank you, Sarah. And good morning to our Canadian audience and good evening to our Chinese friend. This is Xia Feng from Invest Shanghai, and thank you for joining us today. As we know, Shanghai is known as a pioneer city of China, open to the world for its inclusiveness and pursuit of excellence. Shanghai is also the main contributor to the nation's strong performance in the World Bank's doing business ranking making the city one of the hubs for attracting global resources and MNC headquarters in China. Despite the rampant of COVID-19 pandemic this year, foreign investment in Shanghai maintained the steady growth. From January to August, the actual use of foreign investment reached 13.9 billion US dollars, increased by 5.9% reflecting the confidence of foreign investment in the resilience of Chinese economy. Last month, the Municipal People's Congress passed Shanghai's foreign investment regulation, makes Shanghai the first local government in China to release such regulation and will render foreign investors with more opportunities and convenience. It is proven that Shanghai has emerged as one of the city with the largest number of financial institutions and the most comprehensive factor market globally. Shanghai has been ranking among the top three global financial hubs following New York and London, according to the latest Global Financial Center Index report launched last month. According to the city's Financial Regulatory Bureau, by the end of 2019, the city was the home of a number of state-level financial markets, such as the Shanghai Stock Exchange, Shanghai Gold Exchange, and Shanghai Insurance Exchange, and more than 1,600 licensed financial institutions, of which over 30% are foreign-funded. Of the, all of the world's top 10 assets management firms and foreign private equity firms registered in China has started operation in Shanghai. This June, the central government released a new negative list which will remove or lower the foreign ownership caps on certain financial in institutions, in industries. 
Shanghai, in the meantime, has taken the lead with small areas open to foreign investors. It has launched a range of foreign innovative pro projects, such as the interconnection project between Shanghai Stock Exchange and London Stock Exchange, the CSI 300 Stock Exchange Options, and SSE Stock Market. The city is also committed to lift restrictions on foreign investment ratios of joint venture co insurance company operating life insurance business and piloting co-funded uh, well wealth management companies and allowing capital management standards established by MNCs to trade in interbank foreign exchange market upon approval. In addition, Shanghai is also the home to many renowned international financial conferences like the Lu Jiazui Conference and the Inclusion FinTech Conference. For those people who are interested in Shanghai's financial in industries, besides the Golden Triangle formed by Lu Jiazui Financial City and the Ban and the North Ban, the Lingang New Area will be another emergent place with a lot of pre preferential policies. I'll leave it to my colleagues from Lingang to give you some further details. We Invest Shanghai is the only official IPA of the city with more than 20 years experience. Our head office and five overseas representative office worldwide are committed to provide professional services for potential global investors free of charge and are open to any questions and inquiries on investment in Shanghai. Please feel free to contact us. I'll wind up here and finally, Thank you, Sarah, and CCBC once again for holding this webinar and wish today's event a great success. Thank you, Mr. Xia, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in Shanghai sometime uh, in the very near future when we can go. Um, so uh, I think we've, we understand that there's a great agency to help. Uh, if a company does want to uh, register a new presence to make an investment, uh, uh, they often need support to do so. And our next speaker, Mr. Ren Yi, has uh, about 20 years of experience helping multinational financial and asset management companies to access China. Uh, and he's been very active in the recent opening up and, um, uh, and, and, and investments, and he's, I think he's going to tell us a bit about that. So uh, without further ado, I'll let Mr. Ren talk about this. Mr. Ren? I think he's muted. Yes, Mr. Ren, you need to unmute yourself. Hello? There we go. Very good. Oh, yes. So, sorry. It's a, it's a bit technical. See. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sarah. I, uh, thank you for uh, uh, inviting me today for this um, um, presentation. Um, it's, uh, um, I, think, I think I will uh, um, briefly speak today uh, in two parts. The uh, first part is on the, uh, the financial market overview of the China's uh, financial market. Uh, the second part is for the recent latest practice uh, and also the policies. Um, first of all, is an uh, overview of the PRC financial market. Um, I think I'm not sure how much uh, the, the audience have known about um, the, uh, uh, the China's financial market. Uh, we have um, two stock markets um, on show in China. One is in Shanghai, the other one is in Shenzhen. And both of them have um, different boards, uh, whereby you know, the different companies uh, which can get listed according to um, you know, the, uh, um, the applicable uh, listing conditions. Uh, if you look at the statistics, uh, from the year 2015 to 2020, um, the amount of the IPO um, has been steadily increased. Um, the, the current numbers we use is actually at the exchange rate of um, one US dollar to 6.9 RMB. Um, but the current, the latest exchange rate um, has become you know, one US dollar equals to um, 6.7 
um, RMB. So, so the actual number is actually higher than uh, what you see from the, you know, from the VT. And this is for the A share, i.e. the stock market. Um, the next page is on the, on the bond. Um, and China's uh, bond market is also um, huge in size. Um, the, the, uh, the bond market has, uh, you know, including two parts. One is uh, on the stock exchange. Uh, the other one is in the bank market. Uh, this chart is actually shows the, the total number, um, you know, including the both stock exchange uh, and also in the bank market. And you can see um, the amount is also um, is also uh, huge. At the, the year of 2019, is actually uh, more than six trillion US dollars uh, in terms of the, the total issues. Um, in terms of you know, in terms of the um, um, the uh, um, the market of the individual investment assets. Uh, there's also some numbers uh, from the uh, you know about 20 years ago when I started uh, working in this field. Um, the um, you know when the foreign investors, foreign financial institutions, as its managers, you know they started to look at um, you know to to uh, to decide whether to um, you know invest in the China or not. At that time, um, people are still think of. Uh, um, Possibilities, potentials, or the, or the um, you know what may happen in the future, but um, the currently after twenty years, China itself has become a huge market. Um, the the numbers here from the individual investor assets can give you a glimpse um, of the uh, of the uh, you know what the potential that or not the potential the the current market can actually offer and among these numbers um, if you are uh, this is a uh, uh, statistics of the total assets um, from the from the specifics in the year of um, um, I think it's 2018 for example um, you know among these um, total assets about half of them actually are still uh, in the form of uh, bank savings and not uh, not investable assets like stocks or bonds. Uh, so so even you know even the uh, as huge as it is, uh, there's still um, huge potential for um, for investors for asset managers to to tap on as a um, um, as a as a you know real um, market to uh, to develop. Um, the you know as huge as it is, the China is still um, um, got the potential in terms of the in terms of the um, the GDP. Uh, if you look at the GDP number uh, in twenty nineteen, um, China is only second to the to the uh, United States, uh, and is actually um, almost three times the size of the number three Japan, and five times. Um, the uh, you know the, the fourth largest economy, which is Germany. Um, and in uh, and in twenty nineteen, the GDP growth, even you know as a second second largest economy, and China's GDP growth is still uh, still uh, um, the leading position uh, in the world. Um, and um, in because of the COVID-19, you know, as we know, in the um, first half, um, almost all the major economies has been in recession. Um, but uh, among all the um, this uh, um, uh, recession, China's uh, uh, um, effect probably uh, among the among the um, um, the least. Uh, and um, in the second quarter of 2018. Uh, and also you can see from the numbers, um, the China actually has uh, resumed um, the, you know, the, the increase uh, and, um, you know, while leading in, uh, in the um, major world economies. Uh, so from these numbers, I, I just trying to give you um, 
give you some actual feel, actual feel of um, um, of the um, you know of the what in terms of size um, the Chinese market already is. Uh, so from the business perspective, it's, I mean it is not just uh, a place which can offer you potential and possibilities. Um, it is actually itself become a huge market which can help you to you know to to develop. Uh, your global status. Um, on the um, from the second part of my presentation, just trying to go into uh, certain details um, of the you know of the um, um, you know, policies and um, and some precedents that are already in place. Uh, very quickly, uh, it is a chart we, uh, of the China's uh, financial regulators. Um, basically, it has uh, you know under state council um, there is a uh, the stability c c um, commi um, committee and also um, the central bank banking regulator and the securities regulator. Um, and um, uh, also in China, um, the financial industry is uh, is actually is um, highly regulated, um, and um, and there are various uh, institutions um, licenses. Uh, which um, uh, which are available um, to for um, you know for the uh, market players um, to um, to operate different um, types of financial businesses. Um, since uh, twenty eighteen, and China has um, started commenced um, this uh, new round of uh, um, you know opening up of its uh, financial market. And you know, since the 2018, um, different financial regulators like um, you know, from the PBOC, CBRC, and CSRC um, has announced uh, various um, policies um, for removing existing, um, you know, existing shareholding cap um, as well as um, to expanding the permissible business scope uh, of the um, foreign invested financial institutions uh, in the PRC. Um, and um, like Sarah earlier mentioned, um, the latest development is from the fifth one China-US um, tax treaty, uh, among which um, the, the, the new um, timetable uh, has, been, has been put in place uh, for the opening up uh, of the some significant and financial licenses. Uh, you look at the, uh, you know, the, the, the you know, the, 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 um, the PBT um, for the major um, types of financial licenses, uh, which include securities companies, uh, FMCs, fund management companies. Uh, fund management companies is basically for mutual funds, um, and also futures companies, uh, which is. Um, a specific type of um, financial institutions under regulation of the security regulator, CSRC, and basically engaging in futures brokerage. Um, and um, also, uh, like more, we're more familiar with QFIs, are QFIs, um, private fund managers, PFM, for the secondary market investment, and insurance companies, AMCs, which means asset management companies, and the wealth management companies, QDLP, QDIE, QFLP. And for all these um, uh, major financial licenses, um, the you know pretty much um, there's there currently is no shareholding cap. Um, generally, the foreign investor can have 100% uh, ownership uh, of these um, major uh, financial uh, uh, institutions. Um, and um, in terms of the timing for opening up, um, basically all of them. Um, is now formally permitted um, for you know for the uh, the full foreign ownership. And this grant, uh, not just uh, not just the policies. Um, actually, uh, there are already um, quite a number of um, foreign investors, um, principally um, you know financial institutions as managers from the United States and Europe have uh, taken the opportunity and um, have made their investment uh, in the um, you know, Chinese financial sector. 
um, for the securities firms, securities companies, um, which JP Morgan and Nomura have established their um, controlled um, securities, uh, um, securities firms. Um, for the existing securities joint ventures, um, such as like Goldman Sachs, um, JV, Credit Suisse JV, and the UBS JV, and they have uh, respectively increased uh, their shareholding to 51%, and so that they can have um, controlling interest. Um, like I mentioned in the uh, uh, last um, PPT, actually uh, since the, you know, the 1st of April 2020, um, the foreign investors can now have um, up to 100% um, active interest. And to my uh, awareness, a lot of them have, uh, a lot of foreign investors have already started um, in, either in discussion or being considering the possibility of having you know, full ownership. Um, of um, you know their uh, securities uh, firms, I'm sure uh, in China. And next one is uh, for the fund management companies. Um, currently, there's already um, quite a number of um, you know fund management joint ventures currently uh, in China, whereby foreign investors can have um, um, like forty nine percent equity interest. Again, since April first uh, April this year. Um, the full foreign ownership is formally permitted. Um, and uh, BlackRock has uh, obtained and the CSRC approval for, its, um, uh, for the wholly owned fundamental company. Uh, and also according to um, the press reports, uh, there are other um, US and European um, asset managers um, who also, also are in the process of um, applying for or negotiating for um, their um, um, wholly owned fund management companies as well. Uh, in terms of wealth management, um, the, the uh, um, Italian bank uh, in Tanzania San Polo um, have obtained its approval um, for um, its uh, wholly owned um, wealth management um, subsidiaries uh, in the PRC. Um, to, to serve local clients. Uh, for, fund, uh, for the futures companies, um, again, the JP Morgan has um, earlier this year um, secured approval um, for you know, 100% um, interest uh, in a futures company. Mr. Ren. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, okay, you've uh, got four minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the um, private uh, fund managers, insurance companies, and robot advisory, bank wealth management, fintech, and NPL woofies, uh, you can see almost all the, um, um, the and there are various uh, leading financial institutions as managers have secured uh, their, uh, um, um, their uh, uh, subsidiaries in the PRC. Um, for in terms of the actual bin operation, I'll just very quickly run through with it. And, and um, for PFM uh, and um, you know QFIS, uh, there's different uh, methods of tapping on the uh, local market. And there's also Stock Connect, Bond Connect, uh, QFI, QFLP, which can help you to uh, uh, um, you know to have the access. Um, in terms of the typical concerns for onshore platform setup. Uh, there will be concerns from the JV, either, no, either do the JV or WUFI, because currently there's no regulatory restriction. So you can think from a commercial perspective, whether you'd like to have a partner to work with you, or you will go on your law. Uh, and for locality, of course, you know, it's, uh, Shanghai is still a, a major center for foreign investors to, um, to invest in. In Shanghai, um, Pudong is a particular place that um, the foreign investors would like to, um, you know, would, would uh, um, be interested in. Um, then um, for, for the um, typical issues uh, in our past experience, they can include like licenses, uh, you know, how to uh, manage competition from the other um, peers, and also the, you know, consider the shareholding qualification and consider governance, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, and uh, if you need any support, from our perspective will help you with um, uh, structuring, how to find a GD partner if you need it, and the negotiation of the transaction documents as appropriate, and also due diligence on your qualifications so as to satisfy regulatory requirements. Uh, and um, also um, the process on the application documents, uh, business preparation, et cetera, and the coding support, uh, which is something that we can, uh, can you know, um, all help you with. Uh, I think due to the time, I, um, I will stop here um, for, um, uh, for next, uh, next speaker. Thank you very much. There's really a lot uh, going on right now. And as, uh, as I think was mentioned at the beginning, a lot of companies go to Lu Jiazue or maybe the Bund or the North Bund, but uh, that's not the only place in Shanghai to go. And so next we have Mr. Wen Xiang, who is a senior manager of the Shanghai Lingang Special Economic Development Company Limited. And Lingang is a district of Shanghai. It, uh, I believe it means it's along the, the, uh, the port, Lin Gang. And uh, so Mr. Wu is going to talk to us about what happens in that district and why companies might want to invest there. Mr. Wu. Uh, hello, thank you, Sarah. Uh, and uh, good morning to everyone and good evening to everyone in China. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, uh, I Mr. Wu, need to unshare your screen so that Mr. Wu can share your screen. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm Wen Xiang from the Lingang Special Area Company, uh, and I will um, show you some information about the Lingang Special Areas, and uh, we will talk about talk about the policy uh, innovations and the uh, development of financial industries in Lingang Special Area. Okay, so from the name, you can see the Lingang area is a, is a newly set up special areas in China and it belongs to the city of Shanghai. Uh, in the first part, I will introduce uh, the basic information of the Lingang special area. Uh, the Lingang special area is set up in the July in 2019. The, over, the overall plan is printed by the State Councils of China and uh, it's, uh, it's set two, uh, lo two long-term development goals. The first one is by the 2025, uh, the Lingang Special Area will establish relative uh, mature institutional system for free and convenient investment and trade. And the second one is by the 2035, the special area will become a special economic zone with great influence and comp competitiveness in international markets. And this area will be an important platform for the active involvement of China in economic globalization. Also, this place is inspired by the highest leaders. Uh, for example, it's inspired by the President, uh, President Xi. Uh, he said uh, the Lingang Special Area should to, should to pro promote deeper, broader, and more intensified openness in high level and all fields. And the Lingang Special Area should become a better place for connecting onshore and offshore business um, for, for both the, the domestic and the foreign companies. So, uh, we made a conclusion of the development goals of Lingang Special Area. Uh, it will uh, include six key open fields, which is uh, facilitated investment and operation and free goods import and export, easier flow of funds, and highly open transportation, employment, air liberal, liberation, and a convenient access to information. And uh, all these six, Key open fields should be supported by the two basic systems. The first one is implement, implement tax, tax regions and policies. Um, 
And uh, the second one is comprehensive risk control system. So where is Lingang special area? So mention, uh, I think Mr. Xue uh, mentioned the Lingang special area is the new emergent, uh, emergent place for the uh, city of Shanghai. So this place is in, is a, Lingang is a southeast economic district of Shanghai. Um, it's, uh, it has 80 kilometers to current CBD or you can say uh, the Lujiazui financial centers. So it will take you to drive uh, like, like one to one and a half hours uh, to, from the Lingang to the Lujiazui uh, center. And uh, but it's very close to the to the major uh, international transportation port. Uh, it's it's uh, it's thirty kilometers to Pudong International Area, and also thirty thirty kilometers to Yangshan Deep Water Port. Uh, in the in the picture in the left side, uh, we, we can see we can see the uh, we can see the bridge. But actually, there there exists a, a operating bridge, a cross sea bridge from the Lingang Special Area to the Yangshan Port. But and the Yangshan Deep Sea uh, Deep Water Port is uh, the biggest biggest port in the world. And in the future, there is a space plan. Uh, the over the overall field, which is red red place in the left, left picture uh, is 873 kilometers uh, squares. And they, that's big, that is bigger than Singapore, and, but smaller than Hong Kong. Uh, so in the first, uh, in the initial stage, uh, we set a pilot, we set, we set a pilot area, which is the yellow, which is a yellow place in this picture. This area is about 119 kilometers uh, square of uh, squares, and including urban areas and the industrial parks of Lingang Special Area. So uh, the, develop the development plan of the Lingang Special Area, um, there is a picture in the right, but uh, the language is Chinese. Uh, we, we don't need translate it to English, but we can see we can see the major transportation network in th these pictures. Currently, we have the freeway network and subway connecting the Lingang Special Area to the airport to the urban area of the city of Shanghai, uh, and also the deep sea deep, deep water seaport. And then we are we are constructing. We are constructing the new, um, the new infrastructures in progress. Uh, the first is a highway speed railway network. Uh, there will be a, there will be a high speed railway uh, line from the Lingang to directly to the Pudong to the Pudong International Airport, which will cost you uh, like fifteen minutes to. Um, to travel from Lingang, Lingang special area to the airport in the, uh, I think in three or four years. Um, and uh, we, we, we are talking about to construct, uh, construct a new cross sea bridge, which is in the parallel with the currently bridge. And uh, by the 2035, uh, the Lingang Special Area uh, will have a GDP um, be above 1 trillion um, renminbi yuan, which is, uh, which is similar to the Pudong's GDP uh, currently. Uh, and the Lingang Special Area will increase new residents more than uh, 100,000 every year. So the second part will introduce you the policy innovations in Lingang special areas. The innovations in this area is in all fields like the, inspire, like the inspirations by the President Xi. Uh, I, 
I select five major uh, sectors. The first one is finance. The finance sectors will uh, follow the nat national open and free policies, but also the, the sp this Lingang area uh, is promoting uh, promoting its financial industries uh, openness once one step ahead before um, before the national steps. And uh, the, for the legal part, uh, there is a, there is a policy to uh, allow the foreign arbitration institutions to do business in Lingang special area, which is the major information in the legal sectors. And in telecom sectors, uh, uh, the Lingang special area is discussing about the a total uh, a different su supervisor supervision okay super, supervision mode for the international data exchange and uh, the and there is the only there is the only special comprehensive bounded loan in Lingang special area which is the only one in China and for the tax sectors we are discussing about the special tax regime for the offshore income of the financial in, uh, instru institutions and uh, for the foreign uh, foreign employees the individual incomes will adapt to the will adapt to the, uh, the best levels uh, from for uh, for his <coughs> Uh, I think that it will lower to lower to 50 15 percent uh, if you uh, if you hire people from Hong Kong. Yeah. So we have two ways to we have two ways to achieve this info uh, innovations. The first way is the state approve certain adjustment of law, and the second one is the local authorities like the city of Shanghai devolves certain powers to Lingang special areas. Mr. Wu, four minutes. Okay. So in Lingang special area, we have uh, all the nat national openness and reform policies apply to Lingang. But we also got uh, 30 points by regulation departments, which include the PBOC uh, and uh, SAFE and uh, I think the all the financial regulation institutions. And uh, the first, I think the first of seven points is specialized for the Lingang special area, uh, which include the set up headquarters or subsidiaries of all kinds of asset management companies, provide long-term finance to high-tech um, shipment and international trade, and set up of the finance, FinTech companies. Also, it includes the convenient cross-border settlement of RMB, the cross-border cash pool with all kinds of currency and allow cross-border transactions of domestic trade financing assets. So due to the limitations of the time, uh, I'll give you, uh, I, I will show you uh, briefly the, some case of the uh, of the implementation implementations of the um, policies, I think the first is the the joint venture of the asset management, which is mentioned uh, also mentioned in Mr. Ren's PPTs, and uh, the HSBC is fintech companies, which uh, which I think Mr. Ren is the key advisor to this case. And uh, the convenience for the cross-border RMB. So in Lingang special areas, uh, the cross-border RMB settlement is highly efficient. Efficient. So the company, uh, the company need no documents to order the banks to provide the settlement service in Lingang special areas. And uh, the Cash pool in Lingang special areas is regulated by the SAFE. Uh, and I think in China currently there exists two, uh, two kinds of the cross-border cross cash pool. 
but in linear spatial area, they, this cash uh, this cash pool is uh, uh, is brand new by the uh, by innovated by the regulations. So at last, the the policy innovation is about the cross border asset transaction, which is limited to the domestic the layers of credit. Uh, forfeit and risk participation currently, and uh, in future it will expand to uh, wider uh, wider kinds of the products. Okay, so basically the last part is the D Lake Finance Bay, uh, which is constructions by the Lingang Company, and I will show you some pictures. Last minute. Yes. So, uh, so that's uh, that's some pictures in uh, we are we are expecting in uh, three three years uh, in the future uh, we will build a new financial centers uh, for the city of Shanghai. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wu. And uh, it's always very interesting to see areas like this, just how fast they develop. And I know that uh, uh, being able to settle currencies more readily and many of the innovations you're talking about are something that companies want. So thank you very much. Uh, finally, we have two people here from our uh, co-host, Dentons, uh, one of whom will speak. We have Ivy Yu, who is a managing director in Europe, uh, but uh, her colleague Armstrong Chen, who's a senior partner in uh, Denton's Shanghai office, will be speaking. Um, so uh, Armstrong, we will let you wrap things up with your presentation. And you need to unmute. There, oh, there yeah, we go. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, and every speaker have a slice, although it's uh, very boring, I know. So, <laughs> but it's good. Sarah could just cut in to stop me to use the slides if you feel that uh, the time is uh, limited, you see. And uh, we are very happy to see uh, there is a female president of uh, today's panel. Oh, it's a big problem. You see the gender balance problem will happen today. <laughs> so my topic is similar with uh, the former speaker, uh, Mr. Wu, who is the official um, uh, of the Lingang special area. Uh, Today, I'd like to share with you some, uh, uh, some of my uh, attitudes towards the innovation uh, 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 policies or cases of the financial sector in Ningang. Uh, I formerly work for uh, People's Bank of China and uh, CBRC, uh, but now I'm a uh, uh, a lawyer. So um, I can say um, then uh, uh, sometimes it's a different uh, view. Uh, the lawyer's uh, angle is uh, uh, a little different with the officials' uh, level to digest the policies uh, uh, and the regulations. Uh, I could share uh, my uh, slides, uh, if you uh, uh, don't mind. Um, so through the, the slides, uh, we could see uh, uh, the background. Firstly, we could uh, just uh, see the background from a different view. Uh, uh, especially uh, the China-U.S. Uh, dialogue on economic uh, economic sector. Um, let me see how to show. Where's my slides? Mm -hmm. okay. 
Uh, you see, the China and the U.S. signed the uh, uh, agreement uh, last uh, this year, at the beginning of uh, this year, on the economic sector, which have uh, some very detailed uh, content of the financial uh, sectors opening up. Uh, so it is quite uh, crucial for both China and the U.S. as well as for other uh, for other uh, the countries, uh, especially those countries who have uh, a very competitive uh, uh, capacity of the financial sector. Uh, so um, I can say from this agreement, we can see China do a lot of uh, 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 um, um, opening up policies uh, on very de detailed uh, uh, financial industry, like the banking industry, the, uh, the capital markets, uh, and uh, the insurance uh, uh, market. Um, uh, we could see uh, uh, this, some of these uh, policies will uh, be established in the uh, Pudong area and the Lingang special uh, area. Um, I'm interested to uh, I'm right, uh, maybe uh, Dr. Wu could correct. Uh, although Lingang based in Pudong area, but as for the policies and the regulations, is uh, 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 in, uh, the Lingang enjoys independence of Pudong area. So that's my uh, comments. Um, uh, we could see the some pattern projects of uh, Lingang special area. Uh, these projects uh, are going to accelerate the opening up of Shanghai financial uh, industry at a very high level and support the integrated development of uh, uh, Young's River Delta is the financial approaches. Uh, in China, there are three economic engine, uh, geographically speaking. One is uh, Beijing, uh, uh, Tianjin, and the Hebei province. Another is the Big Bay area, which include uh, Guangdong province, Hong Kong, and uh, uh, Macau. And the third engine is the uh, Yangtze River Delta uh, uh, area. So, uh, we could see more, there were uh, three provinces and one uh, city, Shanghai. Uh, so it's more broad than the Big Bay uh, area. And we uh, could see that uh, um, Lingang uh, special area uh, has many financial institutions, uh, including some uh, very big uh, uh, Funds like the uh, artificial intelligence uh, industry investment fund, which uh, scale is about uh, 10 billion, and the CCB uh, International also launch uh, another another uh, 10 billion scale of funds in uh, Lingang. Uh, there are also many Chinese banks there, including uh, 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 ABC, uh, Bank of Communications, uh, and uh, the uh, CCB. Um, you see, uh, in February of this year, the Pudong government also issued uh, uh, some measures to uh, accelerated the construction of the coal bearing area of Shanghai International Financial Center uh, with the support of uh, PPOC, CSRC, CBRC, and the SAFE. SAFE is the foreign uh, uh, administrative of foreign exchange. In May, uh, you see there are several joint uh, regulators in Shanghai also issued uh, a new policy. Uh, we call it the 50 
measures. Uh, it is very detailed information, which our former speaker has uh, uh, illustrated. Um, uh, and you could see that Lin Gang had um, been, oh, it's going to be a special economic function zone with more international market influence and uh, competitiveness. Um, other policies, including, you see, the uh, 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 commercial bank, uh, wealth management uh, subsidiaries, uh, including the uh, uh, financial asset in investment companies uh, in Lingang, they're all welcome to set up in, uh, in, in this area. And we could see uh, uh, there will be more research uh, uh, projects will be launched in this area as well. Um, and you could see some blockchain company and maybe will move to this new uh, area as well. Um, come back to the uh, commercial banks, wealth management uh, uh, subsidiary is a, a, a emerging financial institution, uh, which means Traditionally, uh, the commercial banks could only issue these wealth management products by themselves. But uh, today, uh, these products will be issued by, the, by a special, uh, uh, special arm of the commercial bank. So uh, in Shanghai, in Beijing, uh, every city try to get more and more commercial bank uh, to set up their uh, uh, wealth management uh, uh, subsidiaries in these cities. Insurance company, see the insurance company, maybe is the largest uh, uh, qualified uh, investment uh, institution. Uh, you see uh, insurance company in China. China has the largest uh, uh, Insurance company, as you know, is the PN Group, as is the other um, uh, insurance companies. Uh, you see, uh, traditionally, uh, it's much more smaller than the banking sector, but today it's quite different. Some insurance companies are much bigger than the, than the uh, commercial banks. Uh, you see, this insurance company have a special function to support the SME. Uh, to do some debt investments, which uh, uh, traditionally the, the, the commercial banks cannot do that. Financial asset investment. You see, this is a new financial institution set up by commercial banks, which could directly invest in companies, which means it could be the shareholder of uh, the uh, the uh, the company. So Armstrong, four minutes. Good. So we could see the uh, this financial assets investment uh, company uh, became more and more professional, and uh, it will represent the commercial banks to support the real economy in future. Um, in the meanwhile, we could see more and more uh, fintech company uh, are set up in this new area. You see, the these fintech company are separated from the commercial banks. Uh, traditionally, they are only the department, uh, one department or one sector of the commercial bank support the technology uh, innovation, but today they became a separated arm of commercial bank and very competitive uh, with uh, other uh, peers. Mm, just have a summary. Um, we can see uh, in China, uh, if um, someone just asks me the question why China could develop 
so quickly. Uh, one word, competition. Competition and the competition. You see, different uh, provinces and cities are competitors. So competition is a good thing for China, as well as for other countries, uh, I can say. So another word is innovation. No innovation, no compensation. That's the uh, logic. So if you compensate with the same approach, you cannot succeed. So let's look forward to Lingang special area. What's the innovation approach of uh, this area comparative with uh, the traditional uh, Lu Jiazui or traditional Beijing Financial Street. So I think that's my conclusion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Armstrong. Uh, you know, so if I think if we put these, uh, these different presentations together, just to kind of summarize, we can see that there's a very high potential for asset management in China. If half of assets are in bank savings, you know, there's a lot of uh, opportunity and China is definitely welcoming foreign companies via its uh, opening up policies and that there are rewards for companies that can participate in China's development goals by going to new areas like Lingang. Um, and because there's this competition between municipalities and areas, uh, you know, again, those, uh, those rewards are there. And it's part of the innovation that you've mentioned. Um, I think that it's also worth our audience noting that none of the examples that were given today of the companies that have uh, done these new investments, no, none of them did it alone. Uh, they were all helped by uh, organizations like we have here today, Invest Shanghai, Dentons, the Shanghai Pudong Financial Association, and areas like the Lingan New Area. Uh, CCBC works very closely with our members as well, and I think a lot of them would tell you that you know they don't they don't they don't want to do it alone. So I think there's a lot of support out there. Um, we uh, we do like to start and end on time. Uh, but we do have some uh, really good questions in the Q&A. So what I would like to do is I'll wrap up the formal part of the program here. Any of our audience that needs to go, please feel free to do so. We will make the video available as well as the PowerPoint presentations. We've had some requests, but if our speakers are willing to stay on for 10 more minutes, I'll address a few of the questions that have come in in the Q&A. So for those of you who have to leave, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and uh, please feel free to contact us for future follow-up. Uh, in terms of questions, um, there's uh, one of them that has come in is, um, foreign asset managers and brokerages can now own and operate their own business in China, but it's, having a license is just one step. What are some of the unseen barriers or obstacles that also need to be addressed? So I'd like to ask one speaker to answer that question if somebody would like to. Any volunteers? Sir, I think you need to repeat the question. Probably okay, time. I'll repeat it. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm typing to answer this question, so I missed the, ah. <laughs> your, 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 your question. So I, I, in my opinion, I, 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 don't, um, I don't think there are unseen uh, obstacles for the, especially for the asset managers. I think so. It all depends on the uh, on the advantages of the business uh, of the asset man managers. But maybe there are some more details uh, things I, I I don't know which which is I don't know. But um, maybe Mr. Young or Mr. Armstrong knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me have a try. Uh... Uh, from my perspective, the biggest uh, obstacle is the, the confidence. You see, whether you have confidence of the future. You see, the concrete 
19 just stopped us. Just, uh, you see, the, we are quarantined and uh, we have to stay at home, stay in our city, or oh, at most stay in our country. But after that, you see, everything will change. It will open our door or our window more uh, bigger than before. Every country must practice this. Oh, it will lose the world. I think at least China, uh, oh, most of uh, Chinese have confidence to see the more opening up of the whole world. You see, we do not take the COVID-19 as an obstacle. We take it as an accelerator, accelerator. So that's my point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, another question is that a lot of Canadian companies are smaller, medium size, or startups with good innovation. So what would be the benefit for Canadian companies in going to Linga? Uh Well, I, I think this question uh, is more about the complaints in manufacturers or maybe in the technology uh, industries. Uh, I think uh, in financial sec uh, in this industries, uh, the small companies is not a problem. So you have a you have a big asset management, or you can have a small asset managers. Uh, it all depends on the returns performance. But it um, so I, I I don't think it's a problem for the small companies in finance industries. So uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, well what these questions uh, are talking about. So uh, in, in my understanding, on my understanding is uh, this question is for the, um, for the companies in uh, industrial company, companies, I, I think. So in Lingang, Lingang also, uh, I mentioned uh, in Lingang special area, it includes two, um, it includes two uh, two sides of industries. One side is the um, one side is the industrial parks. So, if for the industrial companies, they they can uh, they can uh, know more details to about the industrial parks. Uh, the industrial uh, in the industrial parks in Lingang Special Area is also. Uh, managed and operated by the Lingang, uh, Lingang Group, which is a uh, uh, mother company of my company. Uh, so uh, we can also provide uh, the service to this uh, these companies if they want to join the uh, industry development of China. So currently, uh, in Lingang special areas, the industrial uh, companies are more focus on the. Um, on emerging on emerging sectors like the uh, semiconductors, like the artificial intelligence, uh, the uh, uh, airplanes, uh, the ship, the ship, and uh, also the medicine and uh, and the biotech. Okay. So, and are uh, related? The somebody asks: Are there incubators or accelerators to support startup Canadian companies in the Lingan? Lingang area. Uh, there, 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 uh, there are policies to support these companies. So, uh, if they, uh, if they, uh, these kind of Canadian companies go to Lingang, it will benefit from the supporting policies, just like the Chinese companies. Okay. okay. Uh, actually. Yeah. May I add words? Uh, you see, I think. Uh, my slides have uh, the, uh, the, the topic of SME uh, in my slides. Uh, uh, that slides shows that uh, uh, the slides about the insurance investment. Insurance funds are encouraging to invest in qualified VC fund in Ninga. And this VC fund uh, more uh, you see, to are going to provide more long-term equity financial support for some social service sector, uh, for some uh, SME to reduce the financial costs and the 
to better the service of uh, uh, these SMEs. So uh, we could find some information through uh, my slides about how to support ME, SME. I think that's one uh, policy. That's Excellent. So we will share all of these slides. And I think as many people have noted in the questions, it's been a very informative presentation by all of you. So I'd like to thank all of our speakers today uh, for coming together to share this very interesting information with us. And thanks to Dentons and Invest Shanghai for co-hosting. Before we wrap up, I just want to note that our uh, CCBC's AGM Business Forum is coming up next week. One of the panels will be on the future of finance um, with the two experts talking not only about green finance, but again about how this reform and opening up can provide a way for Canada and China to focus on a sectoral area that is in the best interest of both countries. So we have lots going on next week. If you go to ccbcagm.com, you'll be able to see the uh, agenda for our virtual forum and uh, we encourage anybody uh, to attend it. Uh, it will happen uh, online. So thanks to everybody today and Edward, thank you for uh, bringing us this great session. Have a good day and a good thank night. You. Thank you for attending.